morning painters and decorators of the internet I thought today what I'm going to do I'm going to talk about some basic things um, if you're an amateur painter and decorator a DIYer um, somebody who's just getting into painting and decorating we're going to talk about sanding we're going to talk about sanding down we're going to see what I've got here Doris I've got Doris the door we're going to talk about different sandpapers as a painter and decorator a few basics basic questions of which sandpaper does Phil the professional painter and decorator use for his day-to-day -day sanding down jobs now if you go into a, a DIY shop you could be inundated with the choice of different sandpapers that you could be um, picking from some of them aren't suitable for a painter and decorator to use some of them are more geared up for a joiner if you think of sandpaper you think of sandpaper it looks like a golden colour I'm thinking of the sandpaper you might be thinking of it's not the sandpaper I'm thinking of but no some sandpapers are geared up for the painter and decorator and some um, sandpapers are geared up for more joiners so today I thought I'll tell you what the sandpapers I use I'll tell you about the sandpapers that are available and what you could use so we'll talk about the sandpaper now and then I'll show you how to rub a door down because that is really interesting how to rub a door down not everybody knows how to rub a door down so I'll give you a five minute break while you can go off put the kettle on come back sit down listen to me gabbling on about sandpaper it's like watching paint dry but it's some things that people might want to um, might want to know so let's let's get on with it right have you had your cup of tea it's going to be like being back at college right sandpapers let's talk about the numbers you're going to see various sandpapers about and it's all to do with the number the lower the number the rougher the coarser the sandpaper the bigger the number the finer the sandpaper is going to be so let's go to what I use that you might think oh I could use that so I'm going to go over to me demo table that's just here I'll go off camera I'll bring the coarsest sandpaper that I've got and show you what it's like I'm coming back right stand back a bit so you can see me this is sandpaper we buy this on big rolls see what it's I've just ripped a piece off we buy this on big rolls this is probably 25 meter rolls um, 50 meter rolls and what we do we rip off per job take off a little bit that we need now this this brand is cling spore can you see that cling spore now this numbers on the back and the the number that you want to be looking at is the P60 number because 60 is a coarse sandpaper you can get a coarser one than that you can go down to 40 this is what I'm using you might be able to get different ones so 40 and 60 I've got various ones so what I've got a coarse one meaning really rough that will take really really rough surfaces down is 60 the next one up we use is an 80 that's not so coarse so coarse not so coarse and then the next one which is really the the day-to-day -day sandpaper that we use is a 120 so we go 120 an 80 and a 60 so the 120 is really the day-to-day -day sandpaper that if we were rubbing down Doris I'd use a 120 so let me show you what I do with that 120 is a piece there it's a bit too long for what I'd want so I fold it over to a nice what would that be five six inch fold it over like that fold it over the opposite way to get a better crease and I rip that off carefully rip it off it's a nice neat line and then what I do I fold that over again and it gives me two sides to use common sense two sides now if you want to be really posh you can buy yourself a, a rubbing block now a rubbing block is either made of cork or it could be made of wood 
and some of them are rubber. Now what you do with that, you rip off a piece of sandpaper that can actually wrap round. If my hand was a rubbing block, you'd wrap it round and you can use that as a flat surface to rub down architraves, doors, anything you want to rub down. Not, it's not complicated. <laughs> it's nothing complicated. So you can use a rubbing block, made of cork, made of rubber, made of wood. Now that would give you a flat surface. If you're needing to rub something down, smooth, flat, use a rubbing block. Now, for rubbing down the door, I won't need a rubbing block. I can mould it, use my fingers, bend it, and it'll get into the mouldings, get in nicely. Now the beauty of using this sort of sandpaper, it's flexible, it doesn't break down on you, and you can bend it, and it doesn't crack. Now some of the sandpapers, the aluminium, blah, blah, blah. aluminium oxide, it's green papers, you probably find that if you bend it over, it starts pulling away from its backing and it starts breaking. I don't use the aluminium oxide um, green sandpapers. I use these ones which are more of a creamy. Can you see that? Centre the light a bit more. It's more of a creamy white colour. Now they're the ones that are a little bit of a self, I won't say self lubricating, but they don't break down on you. But that's, that's a 120, so I use that. The coarser is the 80 so if you've got something that really wants a good rub down you might have some really bad runs on old paintwork I've got the 80 and then the 60 so are you with me so far if you want to go even finer you might be able to get a 180 for finer work now if you want to go to really really fine work let's let's up the game now Sometimes this is like rocking horse poo. This, this is wet and dry sandpaper. Now, as the name suggests, you can either use it wet with water or dry on its own. So let's talk about wet and dry sanding. Now wet and dry sanding is ideal if you've got some old paintwork, because don't forget old paintwork might contain lead. Now, if you want to get a nice smooth flat finish, wet and dry sandpaper is the one to go for. If you're doing really posh finishing work, you might be going over old um, oil-based paintwork that you don't want to put too many deep scratches in it, so you use a finer sandpaper. This is a 120 again, so it's very similar to the one I've just showed you, which is the dry sandpaper that you use, but this is wet and dry sandpaper. Now, that's a big sheet, that's how you buy it. You buy it in a sheet like this, buy it in a pack. Probably get 25 sheets in a pack. Now, what I'd do, I'd either Cut it into thirds. So find the third. Same principle again. Fold it over. Fold it over on the opposite direction. That makes it a bit, a bit more of a weaker crease. And that's how you're going to rip it off. Now if you've got a, a putty knife, filling knife, something like that, you can use it as a, well, an envelope opening tool. So I'm just carefully ripping it down, ripping it down the crease, one side to the other. So I'm doing that. Now, what you find with this, if you can get it over a sharp edge surface, I'm going to use top of Doris the door, because at the minute that's quite stiff. If I go to the door, you see me up there, I'm just literally. Bend it over the top. You can use the oh, edge of a table, something sharp, sharp edged. Can you see how it's gone curly? That means now it's flex more flexible. So that's that's a top tip Tuesday. Bend it and flex it. Now you're going to say to me, Phil, what about you talking about using it dry? We know about using it dry. We're going to be talking about using it wet. Now when we use it wet, get yourself a nice clean bucket, get some warm water, because nobody wants to put their hands into cold water. You fold this again. Again, don't forget, if you've got a rubbing block, use a, rub, a rubbing block that's rubber. You can use that because water is not going to affect the rubber. You could possibly use your, your cork one. You won't lose that in water, will you? Because what's it going to do? It's going to float. But no, get a bucket of warm water. 
put some detergent in it let's get some um, washing up liquid if you're if you're an amateur and you're working from home DIY a little bit of washing up liquid a little bit of flash um, kitchen cleaner not too much because you don't want it foaming up and you put some water warm water in there with a nice sponge in there mix it all up so you've got um, the mix of the water and the the soap now if this was the door that was an oil base and I want to rub it down wet and dry get my sponge bring it out not too much water just wet the surface in get the sandpaper out that's wet makes it flexible and start rubbing it down across the top moulding rubbing it all down once you've rubbed it down obviously the water's running down with any sediment of the paint rinse your sponge out wipe it down and just clean it all down once you're happy with that you could get some cleaner water because obviously there'll still be a little bit of a sediment in your water when you're wiping it down clean water no detergent in it and just go back over it again to get any surface um, sanding down sediment off the off the door off the door frame off the skirting if you're in America watching I talk about skirtings and door frames that's your trim now to the people in the UK trim is what you find on a car so you get where I'm coming from trim skirtings architraves woodwork right so wet and dry sandpaper if you want a fine finish you can use a 120 if you're going even finer because you're doing delic delicate work you can go to 180s 240s you can even go to 1200 2000 sky's the limit they go really fine now what I would say to you is the finer the finish the smaller the scratches so the more rough your sandpaper is the more scratches you're going to be putting on the surface now when it comes to painting you don't want to see scratches in your surface so go to a fine one use that if you want to use a 120 and you don't want it as rough as that not a tip rub it against each other hear that rub it against each other that has now made it not so um, rough that's quite fine now that's probably gone to over a 200 so that's another top tip for you rub them together and you've got finer sandpaper right let's come on to the next thing I'll go off camera come back to you so what I've just nipped and gone and done I've actually got you a bucket of water to show you how to do wet and dry rubbing down not everybody does wet and dry rubbing down anymore it's mainly because they can't be doing with the faffing about getting water uh, wet and dry sandpaper but I say the mess it's not so much the mess because if anything wet and dry sandpaper gives you a better finish to paint on than dr uh, rubbing it down dry uh, because what you're doing is while you're working your way down the door or architraves skirtings you're wiping the surface clean so you haven't got that dust residue that could be left from um, dry sanding down but I thought I'll just show you I've got the water I've got a bit of a washing up liquid in there it's Lidl's own washing up liquid only a splash if you're in the UK or Europe you'll know what Lidl is if you're anywhere else in the world it's um, it's quite a nice um, supermarket to buy stuff from because it's um, a lot cheaper than the main brand um, well main brand main high street um, Tesco Sainsbury's Walmart Asda all of that they um, quite competitive on price also do very cheap airless sprayers so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you up there how to wet and dry rub down. Now you're going to say to me, Phil, do I need a mask? No, you don't need a mask for this because there's no going to, not going to be any dust. This is the whole point of wet and dry sanding down. If you're rubbing down a surface that could have lead paint on, it's ideal. If you're doing an old renovation of an old property and you're not burning off or stripping wood back, if you're actually doing sanding down wet and dry, it's actually ideal because it kills the dust. So I'm going to show you on this panel up here I'll do that section, I'll rub it down, I'll show you what I'm doing with the 120 sandpaper. I've told you about the numbers, the lower the number, the rougher it's going to be, the higher the number, the bigger the number, the finer the sandpaper is going to be. That's across the board, don't matter whether it's wet and dry, um, aluminium oxide, any of the sandpapers, the lower the number, the rougher, the higher the number, the finer. So let's show you, just wetting it in, across the top, I'm starting at the top because obviously it shows up better on the um, camera so I've wet that area in wipes up any grease anything that's on the surface now I've got my bit of sandpaper don't forget you could use a rubbing block piece of wood if you need to do it on a flat surface I'll start at the top bring it down all across look going around the mouldings using my fingers to get into the mouldings on this side see me I'll even I'll tell you what let's even zoom in 
zoom in there. So what I'm doing, rubbing across. Don't rub too hard that you rub off your corners. You possibly will rub the corners out because that's where the um, probably paint's not the thickest. So what you do, rub across, bump down, round and round, all the way around, bump and down. You're not trying to rub the paint off. The main thing is with rubbing down is you're providing a key for the paint surfaces that you're going to, the paint surfaces, well, does that make sense? You're rubbing down to provide a key for the paint to stick to the surface. The little scratches that you're putting on are going to be the mechanical key to the surface. So rubbing it down, coming all the way around, we're just doing that section. Rubbing it down nicely, all the way around, get your fingers into the mouldings, don't miss anything. And then that's that. Now, the water's still quite clean, so I'm going to wipe it down with that. All the way around, got my sponge. Finish top like that. Keep rinsing your sponge, also change your water regular. So that's that, we've rubbed it down. Now you'll know you've rubbed it down nice because you run your hand over it. That feels really smooth. And the beauty with wet and dry sanding, you do get a really nice finish for sanding down. So let's finish that. So do we understand that? Are we all right with wet and dry sanding? Let's see. Old school tips. It's not so much old school tips, just people don't use wet and dry so much. But hey ho. Now, there's some other sanding pads you can buy. You see these, if you're in the UK, Dulux Decorator Centre sell these. They're a sponge with a wet and dry sanding surface on both sides. You get these in quite fine finishes. I don't know what this one was. This might be a, a 240 or something like that off the top of my head. And once, the more you use it, the more worn down it'll go. So the more worn down it is, the more finer it'll be if, if you just want to denib. Again, you can get these wet, put it in there, and finish it off. These are ideal for kitchen units and doors like this. You can get it in, it's like a little fine sanding pad with sponge on, it's beautiful. So let's get rid of that. Just wipe it down so get the residue off. Jobs are good. One. Right, I've got, got my towel here, I'll just dry it off so it's not too wet. Right, so that section there actually feels lovely. Now the difference is gonna be now, I'm gonna to go to what? My 120, that's that. Cling Spore, we're not being sponsored by Cling Spore, but we do like the Cling Spore. This is the sandpaper that it's quite flexible. I've got a nice piece there. If this was wrapped around a rubbing block, you'd be a fraction of that. And again, we're gonna come onto this side. So let's just move it. We'll zoom in there, you can still see me. I'm gonna rub Doris the door down. Same principle all the way around this isn't such this isn't such a fine sandpaper to use compared to the wet and dry still a 120 and I did rub it on itself to make it a little bit less um, coarse you can do the same principle on there but you can see going around that all the way around the molding get it all in and scratching off the paint that was on it nice now with this Now with this, I've not got it with me because it's not this sort of video. Once you've done your door, rubbing it down like that, you dust it off top to bottom. Bottom. Get a nice duster brush, soft duster brush, top to bottom. If you want to use a, a tack rag before you start painting it, you know the tack rag, it's like a, a lint free cloth that's got a bit of a sticky surface to it. Um, you could go over it to get any little last bits of dust residue. So, do you get the principle of what I'm doing there for rubbing down a door? Again, start for the top, working your way down. So, we're nearly there, aren't we? Well, we talked about all the sandpapers that you use. Got one more. Just knock the table over. Got one more. These. Those that are in the no-no. Merca. 
Now Merca do the um, electric sanding machines, the dustless extraction. We're not talking about dustless extraction and using a Merca on this, We're talking about hand sanding. But Merca do these, and I think, what are they called? I think they're called a fine, soft or medium. They're a sanding pad, but it's a sponge on one side, just a fine sponge and a fine sandpaper on that, on that side. Now this is a 150, so it's quite quite high up. This is a, a 240, so that is a finer sandpaper than that. Now you can't use these wet and dry, but these are lovely for finishing off. So if you painted a surface, or you've got a nice surface that's been painted and you want to rub it down, well, I'm gonna drop you down. I can move my camera down. It's all basic stuff, nothing edited and practiced it's all as it comes so this is this is a 150 and it says it's on the back now I can bend this one way and then the other it's flexible but these are lovely because you can get it into the molding with your hand can you see how it's flexing look so again on this door going round all the way around up and down and I'm providing a key to the surface now this is the thing, when you're doing sanding, that's all you need to be doing, particularly when you've got good surfaces to rub down, all you need to do is provide a key to the surface. You don't need to be rubbing the life out of the door, you don't need to be rubbing it back to bare wood, you're providing a key. You're rubbing off any little bits of runs, any bits of oh, a fly stuck on the surface, that's all you're doing. You're just rubbing it down, providing a key. So that's how you rub a door down, can you see me? You're getting the rough bits off and you're providing a key. Now, those sanding pads are lovely when they've worn down. I keep a few in my pocket when I'm going around doing finished coats on um, woodwork. They're ideal if you're spraying because once you've done layers of paint, you can go back, just give them a nib down, fine. Doesn't create much dust. Now, I want to come onto the dust. When you're sanding down dry, if you're sanding down, if you're doing a house renovation and you're sanding down dry, there is that fear that there is the lead content in the old paint. So I'd advise dust mask, if you want to be a bit more posher, a posher dust mask. So cheaper dust mask, posher dust mask. But make sure they fit your face, because if it doesn't fit your face properly, face test fit, if it doesn't fit your face properly, it's defeating the object. If you're going to see white residue around there where you've been sanding down, look at that. If you're sanding down and you're seeing white residue around there or whatever colour it is, that's not fitting properly. But have a mask. If you're sanding down dry and there's clouds of dust and you're dusting off, whether it be walls, woodwork, wear a mask. Just health and safety. But if you're wetting, using wet and dry sandpaper, you don't need the mask because the water will kill the dust. So just to re reflect on what we've talked about, got various sandpapers that I use. These are the ones that I use as a painter and decorator. We've got the wet and dry. We've got the flexible dry sandpaper buying rolls. You could probably, if you go into a decorating centre, you could probably buy this in the meters. You don't have to buy a big 50, 25 meter roll. And then we've got more of the specialist sanding pads. Now I know there's other sanders out there, you can buy sanding blocks, literally that's a block, a thick block that's got sandpaper all the way around, um, but I'm talking about what I'm using as a day-to-day -day painter and decorator. We're not over complicating it, we're not talking about the Merca today. I've got the Merca, I've got the Laros for the big wall areas, I've got the Deros, I've got the Dios, I've got three, dustless extraction, that's, that's another video. But for what we're talking about, showing you how to rub a door down, and that's how you rub a door down. Start at the top, work your way down. I think I've covered it. If I've missed something, in the comments, you know when you click that like button and you smash the bell and you give me the comments, just tell me if I've missed something off that you could say, Phil, you've missed this one off, this is a good one. Uh, recommend this to people. But I think for now, we've just covered the basics of how you rub a door down. Start at the top, working your way down. Make sure when you rub a door down, you rub the correct edges, depending off I'll say it again, depending whether the door opens into the room, you'll, you'll rub down the opening edge. If it's a door that opens into another room, you'll rub down the hinge edge. So, does that make sense? Do you understand that? Hopefully you do. Comments, 
bell, like, do all that. I've shown you how to rub it all down quickly and briefly. Start with the top all the way down to the bottom. Don't forget to have a sheet down, particularly if you're wet and dry um, sanding down. If you've got carpet down, just put a sheet down, just make sure you can um, gather up any splashes. But that has rubbed off the surface because don't forget this was a, was it Hague Blue we used on a previous video on Doris the Door? Hague Blue sprayed. Uh, there's the bed deck underneath there so obviously we've just rubbed that um, Hague Blue off to there and you can see where I've gone with it. So I've shown you how to rub a door down, shown you what sandpapers I use as a professional painter and decorator. It's all the stuff you can actually buy yourself from um, local DIY shops but that's what you need to be doing. Just make sure that the sandpaper that you buy is fit for the job that you're doing. If you are doing woodwork and carpentry you probably don't want this sandpaper, you probably want the sandpaper that you think looks like sand. Sand on a paper. Self-explanatory. But for now, I'm going to say over and out. Thanks for listening to me, talking about basic stuff of rubbing a door down. Comments, bell, smash, uh, like, yeah. We're nearly there to get that Porsche. I sure I must be nearly there. Maybe not. Thanks for listening to me. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.